Hello, it's Justin from the Tech Train here. Question I'm often asked is how to remove the background from an image such as this one here to create an image that has no background like the one on the right. I'm going to show you how to do this using a free graphics program called GIMP. GIMP is an entirely free graphics program that's been around for a number of years now and you can go to GIMP.org and download this either for Windows or for Mac and get started straight away. I'm going to show you how to use GIMP to remove the background from an image such as this one here to create one with a transparent background like the one on the right. So here I am in GIMP. Um, I've maximized this to full screen view. You can see the image here in the middle and the tool that I'm going to use on the left hand side here is called the fuzzy select tool. It looks a little like a, a magic wand. If I click the fuzzy select tool, the thing that I'm going to have to do is to change the threshold down here a little bit. Let me explain what the fuzzy select tool does. If I click over here, uh, you can see that what it does is selects all of those pixels that are next to the one I've clicked on and are roughly the same color. If I click on this green area here, it's selecting those pixels, those little dots of the image, which are roughly the same color as the one I've clicked on. Now, how closely matched are those color shades? Well, that's what threshold is all about. The more I increase the threshold, the more it'll select those pixels which are not quite the same color and um, it's even less rough than you saw just now. So I click on that area of white, it's selecting all of the white and the grays and the creams uh, across the whole image. Reduce that threshold down and it's going to be much more um, limited. It's going to select only those colors which really are close um, in color to the one I've clicked on. So what I'm going to do is set that up at the moment to around 30. Uh, obviously, you'll need to just play around with it and, and try, uh, experiment a little. And I'm simply going to click in a background area. It doesn't really matter where I click. Now, you'll notice that when I do click, it selects an area, but it's certainly not anywhere near accurate enough. We've still got loads of the image not selected. So what I need to do is to hold down the shift key. Now, if you watch my mouse pointer carefully, you'll see that when I press the shift key, as I am now, a little plus sign appears next to the mouse. This means I can now click on another area of the image and click, and this will add to the selection that I've already got. So if I was to click that area, that adds that selection to this area on the left here as well. I'm going to keep the shift key held down and click down here. And I can click to select that and select that area. Effectively, what you're doing is you're going to add as much as you can to the selection that selects the background you want to get rid of. Now, I'll notice down here, the last time I clicked, it's actually selected part of their finger. So how can you remove from the selection? Well, if I hold down, I'll move my mouse over here. Hopefully you can see it uh, clearly. Um, if I let go of the shift key and I now hold the control key down, you'll see that I've got a little minus sign next to the mouse. I can now click on this area and that removes this from the selection. So a couple of clicks there, that's removed that from my selected area. I'm going to go back and hold the shift key down again and add in this green area. Uh, a couple of little clicks there. You can sometimes see just over here, there's a little area that's not selected. I can just click in that area there. Uh, look for these little sort of spot areas there. Um, it's really a case of just clicking around the background image. Uh, I'm not wearing too much at the moment. If I make a mistake, I can always... Uh, undo or I can hold control down and remove from the selection um, just a couple of clicks here might need to zoom in sometimes uh, if you hold the control key down and you roll the mouse wheel forwards then you can zoom in easily and just try and add that selection there that's fine we've got a little bit of the uh, edge of the phone selected here so I'm going to hold the control key down and click a couple of times in that area that 
unselected quite a lot so I'm just going to undo that bit let's try up here there we are and at this point because I'm doing more fine selecting I'm going to have to remove um, or lower the threshold I'm going to take that down to around 15 now and just click a couple of times on the edge of this image I'm not going to go for the best possible effect because uh, it'll take too long and I want to show you the the tools and the method um, let's just add to the top area there a little bit and we've got a couple of areas of the hand that we need to deselect there there we are that's about fine um, you can play around with this obviously for longer adding to and then removing from the selection but effectively what you'll need to do is as I have here now selected the entire of the background that we want to get rid of now the next step we need to do is go up to the layers menu at the top here click on layers and come down to transparency and what you want to do now is to add an alpha channel so click on that don't worry it doesn't make any physical um, change to the image uh, that's fine it'll, it'll look much the same but what we can do now is either um, go up to uh, edit and clear or you can see you can just simply press the delete key um, and that will delete the background but we aren't quite finished yet because the the edge that we've selected won't be perfect it'll look a little little odd so a couple of little tweaks that we can just improve here um, first of all what I'm going to do is go up to select and choose grow so I've gone to the select menu click on grow this effectively expands the selection so don't forget I'm still selecting the background area so if I expand it by around two pixels is fine uh, and click OK what it's doing now is it's just slightly now selecting the very edge of the image I also make, I want to make sure here that on the left hand side in my fuzzy select tool I've got anti-aliasing on <clears throat> so uh, I have got anti-aliasing on I've got uh, the selection slightly extended now by a couple of pixels the next thing I'm going to do is go up to filters and then down to blur and we're going to choose Gaussian blur so I click on that uh, and again around two for the horizontal and vertical is fine uh, leave everything else at default settings and click OK so what that'll do is it'll just soften up the edges a little bit so we don't have that harsh um, look as though you've got a pair of scissors and literally cut it out it, it looks a little bit softer and, and uh, more natural now the final thing is to save this uh, but saving it in a format that has a transparent background so I'm going to go up to the file menu and we don't go to save as what we do is go to export as so click on export as and in a second there we go uh, what we need to do is down here in the file type box we need to select PNG there it is um, PNG image okay that's the type that you want to select so PNG image uh, and then at the top um, let's just save this as phone demo at dot PNG which is the format that we're using so once you've uh, named it and you've chosen this file type here click export um, again leave the defaults as they are and I'm going to click export again that will just take a few seconds here to export it and then what we'll do is I'll open up PowerPoint and demonstrate what this now looks like okay there we are so let's go back into PowerPoint uh, let's open up our thumbnails go to a blank slide here and I'm going to go to insert pictures uh, there we are so there's phone demo the one I just uh, made now so I'm going to double click that and there we are so I'll just resize that slightly so not perfect but not bad uh, for a few seconds there um, so that's how to remove the background from an image and how to save it then in a format that has a removed background image I hope you found this useful. If you did, please do give this video a quick thumbs up. 
Um, also, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. That would be fantastic. And, of course, feel free to share this video if you think that other people will find it as useful. Uh, if you have any questions or comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comments box below. I do my best to uh, read them and to reply to as many as I possibly can or to address them in future videos. So do leave those below and I will do my best to reply to you. Thank you very much indeed for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.